Hi everyone, very good morning and welcome back to Crack Grade B. So we were doing uh, the government schemes related to the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, right? So yesterday we have completed two or three uh, schemes. Now we are going to complete further of them and uh, there are many more of the schemes under this particular ministry. Okay. Now let's see and move forward. Fine. Yesterday we have read the seed scheme that was for denotified tribes, right? And we were doing the smile scheme. Smile scheme for the transgenders. There are two components under that. One was the comprehensive rehabilitation and the next component was the central sector scheme for the comprehensive rehabilitation for all those people who are involved in the act of begging, right? So we are going to read this particular component today. Anything you remember out of it or nothing? Right, so there are two components. I'll just revise you again. It is a central sector scheme of the ministry, right? There are two components, though both are related to rehabilitation. But in this rehabilitation also, we are talking about one rehabilitation for others and the other one is for the begging all those people who are involved in the bagging we want to rehabilitate them so now let's see how we are doing this particular procedure so number one is your survey as well as the identification so survey and identification of the beneficiaries will be carried out by the implementing agencies who all are involved in the begging then after that rescue and shelter homes will be provided there are some uh, guidelines regarding that as well so shelter homes is going to facilitate the education for the children. These will cater to at least 50%. Special attention will be paid to the children, women, depend, dis differently abled as well as the senior citizens, right? And this is also important thing. A person can reside in the shelter for a period of six months, not more than that, right? Dependent children of the female beneficiary, they can accompany the female beneficiary. That is the provision related to the shelter homes. After that, the last thing that is important is the financial assistance under this particular initiative. It will be given by the respective states like municipal corporation, central government, state UTs, local urban bodies, NGOs, community-based organizations, individuals, etc. If these kind of organization, they want to establish any, uh, what you can say, shelter home, then the assistance will be provided to them under this particular ministry's scheme. Fine. Now, the next thing that we have to read is our uh, next scheme. Let's come back to on it. It is called as PM Daksh. In one of the schemes, we have mentioned about PM Daksh. Do you remember what was that scheme? In one of the scheme, we have mentioned about PM Daksh. What was that scheme? Do you remember anything? Good morning. So, in the transgenders related scheme that we just recently just completed, that is called as the SMILE scheme, under that we have read that the skill related development will be provided under PM Daksha. So, let's see what is the full form of PM Daksha, Pradhan Mantri Dakshata or Kushalta Sampan Hitagrihi Yojana. Now, very important thing is its eligibility who all are eligible for this particular scheme. So let's see this. First of all, let's see the objective. What is our objective? Objective is to increase the skill levels of the target youth. Both kind of long term as well as the short term skills will be provided to anyone who is interested. Now there was one change in this particular scheme. Before 2020 and 21, the list of beneficiaries were a little bit less and then we improved it much further by inclusion of scheduled caste as well as the sanitation workers. So because they have included a bit recently, that's, for, that's why you have to remember them, correct? So now the scheme has the target to skill all of these people who are eligible. 
शेड्यूल कास्ट ओ बी सी ई बी सी डी एन टी डी नोटिफाइड ट्राइब सफाई कर्मचारी इंक्लूडिंग वेस्ट पिकर्स फॉर वॉट पीरियड सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टैब्लिश दिस पर्टिकुलर स्कीम फॉर दी फाइव ईयर्स टिल दी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सिक्स सो प्लीज रिमेंबर वन थिंग ओवर हेयर दैट थिंग आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू बिफोर हैंड दैट वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट द शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स ओवर हेयर वाई वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स बिकॉज देर इज अ सेपरेट मिनिस्ट्री फॉर शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स दे आर गोइंग टू गिव the separate kind of programs for them and hence whenever we are talking about here in the eligibilities you are not going to see the scheduled tribes that is the exclusion and if you just have a common sense you can apply it over here and you will not need to remember this particular data fine now next important component who all are the implementing agencies so we have scheduled caste as a beneficiary so implementing agency will be this national schedule caste finance and development corporation we have obcs uh dear understand this the document which is given in the paid course is a lengthy one fine so i have what i have done over here is i have made it little bit things that i think that are extra in nature or that can be skipped i have removed them while uh, conducting this particular lecture so that is the only difference uh, so if you are someone who looks for a bonus points then you can refer that particular document but i have not skipped anything that is important so that is the number one thing all these points that are mentioned in the paid course related document that are just little bit extra nothing else you will notice for yourself even if those points have been uh, removed there is no uh, what you can say impact over this particular document because some points are repeated repetitive in nature so i have skipped only those points so you can refer that document there is absolutely no problem fine both are similar kind of document only now let's see over here the next is the national backward classes finance and development corporation why because we already have the obcs as our beneficiaries so this uh, agency is going to be there next is safai karmcharis finance and development corporation or again the same explanation why do we have that as an implementing agency the budget outlay is like 450 crores for 2021 to 2025 6 now you will notice the document which is given in your paid course in that the allocation for the previous years like 2020 2021 they have already be also been provided and i have not included those because i don't think that are important to read because see we have so many information it is important that we read just the current budget outlay that much is also sufficient so we are not going into that much depth fine now next thing are the key features what we are going to do under pm daksha see every scheme what government actually tries to do is very important fine so with that features let's see number one point is free of cost training will be provided for the trainees through 100% grants by the government there is a also provision of stipend 1000 to 1500 per month for the training having 80% and above attendance the point to be noted over here is the stipend will be given on the factor of attendance if you have a routine kind of attendance then the stipend that will be given to you will range from 1000 to 1500 that means stipend will be increased based on your attendance after that the wage compensation will be 3000 per trainee 2500 as per pm daksh and 500 as per common cost norms for the trainings having 80% and above attendance you can understand it like 2500 is a basic thing that will be provided it's fine <laughs> so we uh, where were we yes so 3000 you can understand that the 3000 amount rupee amount is being provided once you have completed 
right and 500 rupee will also be provided in order to cover your cost so one is called the basic component and other one is called as a base uh, what you can say variable component right it depends now next thing is trained candidates they are going to be provided with the certification certification will be nsqf aligned national skill right nsqf related standards will be provided and after that sector skills council they are required to provide employment to train candidates to the extent of 70 percent the scheme has two components number one is training then the other component we have is called as placement so once you have trained the candidates after that you have to provide them the placement as well and this has been mandated that the sector skills council they have to provide employment to the trained candidates up to a limit of 70 percent that is a mandate under pm dakshu right this is the placement related uh, standard that you have to achieve fine now next is eligibility who all are eligible see although i could have skipped this piece of information as well but i did not because uh, sometimes a little bit repetitiveness is good for uh, reading so hence here under the eligibility see candidates of the age group 18 to 45 years they can apply under this particular scheme now who all are eligible person belonging to scheduled caste other backward classes having annual family income below 3 lakhs Achha, what is the uh, what you can, what is what was the amount under the creamy layer in the other backward classes which people are excluded by virtue of creamy layer concept what was the threshold for excluding creamy layer people can someone tell me what was the threshold Anyone? Uh, that is scary because we have studied that in one of the documents earlier and I guess that you should be knowing about it. So that was 8 lakh rupees, isn't it? Yes. Monica, right. So this is called as 8 lakh rupees is your income. That means if someone is having an income above 8 lakhs, then they will be counted under the creamy layer and hence they will be removed from the benefits. Now next is your economically backward classes. For them, having annual family income below 1 lakh is the threshold. Now next is transgenders are also over here. When we were reading the smile scheme for the transgenders, now I am repeating this again and again so that you remember it while we complete this. Smile initiative was there for transgender community and in that we have read that uh, the skilling related component will be provided to them under PM Daksh. Right? We have read this denotified seminomadic tribes so for them we have the scheme called as the seed initiative correct who else is eligible safai karmcharis are also eligible now see what kind of skill development and training programs we are providing so for that i would like to suggest you that while reading this you can just have a look, you can just understand and then there is nothing to remember in this piece of document. Fine. So first of all types of skill development, upskilling and reskilling. Upskilling and reskilling means you already have some amount of skill. Like you are working, this is applicable for the rural artisans on the vocation of practice like pottery, weaving, carpentry, waste segregation domestic workers etc etc for the what they require exactly is you can provide them the reskilling related thing reskilling they already know something you are just providing a little bit extra like someone is working as a sanitation worker so they might be involved in the manual scavenging etc etc you provide them the training so that they can perform a little bit more they can operate machines in order to remove the uh, sanitation related uh, whatever the problems are there now next thing short term trainings 
short term training here we are focusing on the wages or the self employment so under what you are going to do you are going to focus on like employed tailors training furniture making food processing etc etc understand this this kind of training is provided so that the person can get the immediate employment turant turant naukri mil jaye kaam karne lag jaye so that is the initiative under the short term trainings understood after that we have called as the entrepreneurship development program entrepreneurship development program few people always have uh, what you can say the entrepreneurial bent of mind they have thinking they think like an entrepreneur so this scheme is targeted towards those sc and obc youth who have undergone skill training under pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana and we want to develop them a little bit further we want to make them entrepreneurs so a higher level of skill training will be provided under this particular scheme curriculum will be modeled by the ministry of rural development as provided by the rural self employment training institutes and under this what we are going to train them about about business opportunities market surveys working capital etc etc so some high order concepts training related training will be provided to such students so that is called as a entrepreneurship development components these are the three components under this particular initiative i hope now you have understood this fine now long term courses are also there long term courses means the timing will move from the 5 months to 1 year that will be the duration under long term courses here training program will be as per nsqf all india council of technical education like what we are going to train them about production technology plastic processing apparel technology healthcare related sectors now this is not a what you can say exclusive list they can be this etc denotes that there can be certain other sectors what you have to understand about is that the duration will be 5 months to up to 1 year see whenever we we are trying to teach something difficult right obviously that needs some amount of time and hence we have different different kinds of component like immediate employment that means short term courses long term courses we also talked about the reskilling we also talked about developing the entrepreneurship related mind so all of it these are the components under pm daksh now you know the eligibility requirement as well all of the people who are in the age group of 18 to 45 years belonging to Scheduled caste, OBC, denotified tribe, safai karm chari, transgenders, right? They all are eligible under the PM Daksha Yojana. One more thing, uh, scheduled castes as well as the safai karm charis, they were included recently in the year 2020-2021. Fine. So this is the thing that you have to remember under this for this particular initiative. Now moving forward to our next scheme. Fine. And while at reading out this particular scheme i have already told you that which points you have to focus more and which points you can just have a good read once we have understood that okay what kind of training is being provided i don't think that you have to go in detail for each kind of training there is uh, absolutely no need of it okay now the next scheme that we should be talking about and just wait for a second yes so let's start national action for mechanized sanitation ecosystem called as the namaste now i don't know who make these kind of short forms but let me tell you 
these kind of short forms are very important whether you remember the full form or not that is not relevant but you have to remember that okay this acronym stands for which kind of scheme that means who is the ultimate beneficiary like we talked about the seed initiative fine so we have to remember that okay this scheme is for denotified tribes they are not going to give you the full form they will just mention seed scheme and they will ask that who is it for next the like smile scheme so from the names of these schemes like from the acronyms of these schemes we are not very clear that they are for which kind of people or which category of people so number one learning that you should be taking out of this is please remember so this namaste scheme is we are going to implement for the sanitation workers remember sanitation workers i guess we have talked about this earlier as well so there are people who were involved in the manual scavenging cleaning the septic tanks sewer tanks from the hand without any protective gear and this led to uh, there are so many deaths that keep on happening because of this uh, kind of work that they do they do not have access to any kind of protective gear which can help them while cleaning um, uh, cleaning this particular process and uh, uh, in one of my lectures, I have already told you that uh, there are initiatives that have been taken by governments all over the India and one such initiative is the Bandikut that the Kerala government has taken that is a robot that will be used for the uh, this uh, cleaning of the sewer tanks etc. So for that initiative, let's talk about the Namaste scheme. It is a joint project with between the ministry of social justice and the ministry of housing and urban affairs whenever see whenever the context involves two particular ministry understand that they both of them have their separate objectives how ministry of social justice wants to work it for the safai karmacharis as well as the manual scavengers Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs why they want to do it because cleaning of the cities they come under their uh, what you can say sphere of influence hence they want to do it now who's going to be the implementing agency again we have an agency called as the national safai karmachari finance and development corporation this particular agency is going to be responsible for the implementation of namaste scheme total outlay is 360 crores four years are there from 2022 to 2025 six this is going to be the period of implementation. Now what we should see from here because it has been implemented very recently it becomes very very important for us to remember. Cool. Now next is what is the aim. So aim after uh, the narration of mine you must have understood but let's for the better clarity of mine let's see what are the aims. So we want to ensure the safety and dignity of sanitation workers in the urban areas. We want to provide them sustainable livelihood. We want to provide them good safety gears as well as the machines. We want to provide them the alternate livelihoods if they want so that vulnerabilities can be reduced. Uh, asking implementing agency is private okay see understand my point over here whenever we say implementing agency implementing agency at the central level it is going to remain the same but what happens is for the on the ground work related purposes certain private agencies can be involved for, see any kind of organization when we talk about there are manpower restrictions we need manpower for them correct implementing agencies has been made but on the ground level implementation they can hire the private agencies so please do not confuse these between uh, two of these right Is that fine? Lifting secrets? It is lifting or lifting? I don't know. 
what you have written fine see over here so alternate livelihood support entitlements to reduce the vulnerabilities of the sanitation workers finally it would also bring about a behavior change amongst the citizens towards the sanitation workers see there are so many uh, problems in the society that keep on happening against the sanitation worker the people they do not treat sanitation worker on an equal pedestal they do not see them as equal so in order to remove the uh, what you can say in order to remove the kind of uh, discrimination that happens against the sanitation workers we are implementing this particular initiative now what we want to achieve under this particular scheme now this uh, component is just one time read right this component outcome to be achieved under the scheme we cannot skip it in the first reading this uh, when you are going to read this once you are clear with it you will not have to read this again and again that is what i want to say once read it is fine now to see what we want to achieve zero fatalities in the sanitation work in india i have already told you in the manual scavenging related process there are so many people who die every year if you follow the newspaper religiously i hope i know that you must not be following these kind of news but it apart from that if uh, someone reads the newspaper very carefully they will see next is all sanitation work they are going to be performed by the skilled workers we want to provide them the skilling we want to provide them the machines we want to provide them the protective gears next no sanitation worker should come in direct contact with the human vehicle matter why the right now the problems happen because they do not have any kind of protective equipment to protect them they do not have so that is why the problems occur sanitation worker they are to be collectivized into self help groups and they will be empowered to run the sanitation enterprises once they collect themselves in self help groups the government can provide them the funding and once the funding can be provided they can start something of their own right sanitation related enterprise they can start it so that is what government's objective is next see over here so all sewer as well as the septic tank sanitation workers they have access to the alternative livelihoods they strengthen supervisory and monetary systems as well national state and urban local bodies level increased awareness among the sanitation workers so you see this was all just one time read once you have read it for the completion of the topic you are not going to read this again right you can focus on the other components of the scheme now let, let's talk about the coverage this is an important point that you should be remembering about so what kind of cities we are going to cover under the namaste scheme for sanitation workers so all cities and towns with a population over 1 lakh with notified municipalities including cantonment boards cantonment boards are there in the military areas i hope you all are aware so in military areas civilian population is also there and for those civilian population cantonment boards are made so that is what it is being written over here all capital cities see now understand this very carefully they can be capital cities which are not having the population over 1 lakh it can happen right if a capital city let's say capital city of your uh, ut of andaman and nicobar or the capital place like port blair it might not have i am not uh, aware that what is the current population of port blair i am just saying fine so like kavarathi on lakshadweep or port blair they might not have a population of 1 lakh but still they are going to be included under this particular initiative why because they are the capital cities or towns of state or uts fine uh, i do not know uh, another disclaimer i want to give you i do not know what is the exact population of port blair but uh, i am assuming it might be 1 lakh it might not be so port blair kavarathi and places like that next is 10 cities from the hill states islands as well as the tourist destination not more than one from each state you have to take one from the each state and 10 cities you are going to take from the following destinations 
so the provision of this was so that whenever you are choosing 10 cities you should not discriminate in favor of one state once like himachal will say that we have got five tourist places and these are quite popular so scheme says no we have to pick these 10 cities from each of the state now next thing is what is the survey related component so a small very small uh, information over here so the survey is going to be conducted by the city namaste managers and this will be validated by the urban local bodies what we want to do over here is we want to identify that who all are involved in the process of this kind of sanitation work this is why enumeration or survey will be conducted so just a small piece of information what you have to remember out of it is this that survey is going to be conducted by the city namaste managers that's it next is benefits this is the important component we should you should be uh, having a careful idea about so who are all the beneficiaries number one thing implementing agencies number two thing number three thing is what are the benefits that are provided under the scheme these are the non-negotiable parts which you should be having a clear idea about fine so the number one is the extending insurance scheme benefits we already have a scheme called as the ayushman bharat pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana so we are going to extend the benefits the family insurance related benefits that are we provide under the jan arogya yojana to the people who are involved in the sanitation work next is livelihood assistance see livelihood assistance your safai karmachari finance and development corporation they will provide the funding support subsidy as well as capital interest to the sanitation workers why so that they can procure the equipment as well as the vehicles for the sanitation related works so here the finance as well as like you were asking that implementing agencies is something different so implementing agencies is a central level is made such an organization which can we can put the accountability on that okay you are accountable for the performance of this scheme now how you are going to implement that scheme by the help of private uh, agencies or some government agencies that totally depends on you government has just fixed up their responsibilities right so here livelihood assistance capital related subsidy interest related subsidy is going to be provided by whom your safai karmachari corporation and why this capital and interest subsidy will be provided because we want to help you in order to procure the equipment as well as the vehicles fine now there are some other activities also like the counseling will be provided capacity building training will be provided as well as alternative livelihood government is giving capital subsidy for that as well now these are the subsidy related outlays that you can have an idea about fine so rate of interest that will be chargeable if your project is up to 1 lakh or your project is above 1 lakh then this is the rate of interest that is going to be charged 5% for other people 4% for the women beneficiary so we have the 1% subsidy interest subsidy for the women then upfront capital subsidy so for individuals if the project is up to 5 lakh rupees then 50% of the project cost this is going to be the subsidy that means 50% of your project cost up to 2 lakh 50 thousand it will be provided by the government interest subsidy means that interest amount will be charged lesser from you capital subsidy means the capital amount that means whatever your project cost you will be provided a benefit for that as well now next if your project is between 5 to 15 lakhs then this is the capital subsidy that you are going to get 2.5 lakhs and 25 percent of the remaining cost of project we have already seen this kind of uh, support in one of our earlier schemes right so i'm not going to explain again the corp uh, the calculation part group projects up to 10 lakhs per beneficiary with maximum project cost up to 50 lakhs right this we have already seen the maximum 
individual related subsidy maximum is 3.7 lakh per beneficiary this is the maximum sub, uh, subsidy that can be provided under the group projects next is interest subvention is also admissible what can be your uh, what you can say, what should be the maximum repayment period. So moratorium period that is going to be provided under this particular initiative is up to six months, fine. And if the project cost is up to five lakhs, then you have to repay the whole amount within five years. And if the project cost is above five lakhs, then you have to repay within the seven years. These are the things over here. Now a little piece of information over here, not very important, but uh, See, where, while I am going to explain you the schemes, at the same time, I am going to explain you the component as well, that which points you should be reading with utmost attention and which points you can have just one single read. Let I mean, you can skip them once you have read them once. At least reading once is very crucial. Without it, you cannot do. So I could not have skipped these. So saturation of social security benefits, that means what? We are already having some kinds of social benefit schemes, right? So these schemes benefit will also be provided to the sanitation workers. That is what I want to say over here. So schemes like ration related scheme, we have Avas Yojana, scholarship that we give to pre-metric and post-metric level, Enrollment of out of school children, adult pension yojana and the pension scheme for old persons, widows, etc. All of it is going to be included and the benefit is going to be provided for the sanitation workers. Right now the three levels of implementation of scheme. What is the implementation structure? So Sometimes in some schemes, implementation structure is important. Why? Because secretaries are involved. Fine. But in this particular scheme, you are going to see secretaries are not involved. So the implementation structure does not become that much important. But still question can be asked regarding what? Regarding that whether the secretary is a chairman or a director under this. Right. So a negative form of question can be asked to you. So first let's read the three levels of implementation of this particular scheme. What are the three levels of implementation? Number one is the national namaste management unit. So this is going to be at the national level. Who is going to be the director? So there will be a managing uh, director, managing person will be involved over here. No, no role of the secretaries is lying over here. There will be a technical support unit in order to help the national uh, namaste management unit, right? This unit is going to provide, this will be a team of IT professionals and they will be having SHG experts, banking experts as well. See, uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, understand, uh, let me repeat myself again what I said that in some schemes the structure of implementation becomes important why because some important people are involved in that structure for example suppose if i have said that okay in national namaste management unit minister of social justice and empowerment is going to be the chairperson now automatically this piece of information will become useful for me why? Because yes, this is a vital piece of information and because of that, the structure will become important. But this happens that in this particular initiative, you are going to see that uh, there is no involvement of minister, secretary, etc, etc. No. Some people managing director have been involved. What are the qualification, etc. that has not been mentioned over here. We are not, do we should not go in depth as well. We just have to remember that, okay, no secretary, no minister, etc. They are involved in this. Having just this fair amount of idea is going to help you. Fine. At the end of the day, we all know that the structure involves three levels, national level, state level and then the local level. Three structures are there. We all are aware, nothing to read about. But the structure becomes important when there is a strong personality that is heading that particular structure. Let's say Prime Minister has made the uh, chairperson of this National Namaste Management Unit. Then automatically this piece of information will become very important for me. So is that clear to everyone? 
what I wanted to say. So these are a few little things that on the basis of that you can judge that what is important for us and what is not. Now next is state management unit. In state management unit again you are going to see state government is going to decide a suitable officer. Now there are so many state governments and which officer they think that is suitable is none of, of our concern, right? We are not going to go into that much detail. Next is city namaste monitoring unit. At the city level, city namaste monitoring units, they are going to consist of namaste mod nodal officers and it will be designated by the urban local bodies. So this is a, a little piece of information that you can remember that at the city level, Namaste nodal officers are appointed by the urban local bodies. Once read, I guess that is enough for you to remember it. Right. right. Now next is the convergence of program. Convergence of program means what? These are the programs also that you are going to implement for the benefit of your sanitation workers. What are these? SHG formation, PPE, personal protection equipment. You are going to procure them and provide to your sanitation workers. After that, safety devices as well as the equipments, procurement, Occupational safety related training, providing work assurance and interventions under the Amrut program. Now the point over here was that how does convergence happen? Convergence happens means if there are scheme of one ministry and other ministry is also along with it, then they are going to mix the implementation of their schemes. So Amrut mission is under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, right? Now because both of them are operating together on the namaste scheme so namaste scheme is going to converge with this amrit mission as well can someone tell me that what this amrit mission is all about can someone tell me that what does this amrit mission is all about now this is a just information education related campaign that will be run by the urban local bodies as well as the uh, your Safai Karmchari Association that is uh, only piece of information not very important but I did not skip it. What is Amrut Mission all about? No. Do you remember Amrut Mission or not? Very bad. We have already covered this. Please go and read about it if you are not knowing about it. Because again, this is an important scheme. Perennially, it remains in news and that's why it becomes a very important for us to. Very good. Gaurav. Good. So let's see over here. Scheme for residential education for students in the high schools in target areas. Sreshta scheme. I have again told you the names of the schemes are so peculiar. Uh, not just that component, not just uh, your uh, proper water supply. There are so many. It, it is the scheme about the urban retrofitting, right? We want to uh, change the landscape. We want to change the facilities that are provided. We want to revamp everything. We want to uh, focus so that the cities can work up to their efficient efficiency level. So that is the scheme of uh, urban rejuvenation for the Amrit Mission. Uh, please go and read about it. Yes, basic civil amenities for the urban areas. That is what we want to revamp this. Good, you guys have the idea about that scheme. Great. Now next see the scheme for residential education for students in the high school targeted areas. Again, the same thing I am conveying to you. Please remember the name of the scheme because they are so unique. You should remember that, okay, Namaste scheme for sanitation workers, smile scheme for transgender, seed scheme for denotified tribes, like, like that. You, you should be having these things on your tips. 
Now next thing, let's see what the, why the scheme has been formulated. So this is first of all, this is we want to provide the residential education. Residential education means the provision of hostel along with your sitting, uh, along with your education related thing. For the students in the targeted areas, it has been formulated so that we can provide the quality education even to the poorest scheduled caste students as per the constitutional mandate. Our constitution says that government should uh, design the schemes for the upliftment as well as the empowerment of SC and ST population. So that is our constitution mandate and with regard to that we have formulated this scheme. Now first of all you have to see that who all are the eligible under this particular scheme. Whenever such kind of eligibilities are listed out it becomes very important for us to remember. So we knew, we knew that Shrestha scheme is for scheduled caste communities but at the same time we want to uh, remove the creamy layer. Now this creamy layer, I am just uh, saying that this is a creamy layer. This is not mandated by Supreme Court, government etc etc. This differs from the scheme to scheme but the OBC related creamy layer of 8 lakh that exists, fine. That is a mandate but here you see if the income should be up to 2.5 lakh per annum that you are actually in the need and next thing free of cost education as well as the residential related support will be provided from which class from class 9th to class 12th. So with these three particular lines I hope you have already covered the 20% of this scheme 20-30% of the scheme Shrestha scheme. Now rest of the scheme is just the elaboration that okay what kind of scholarship we are going to give etc etc now next is how the students will be selected so not we are not going to provide the scheme for everyone we are going to provide this uh, facility only for the meritorious students how those meritorious students will be selected so there will be a examination called as national entrance test that will be conducted by the national testing agency this national testing agency is was it was made for such kind of purposes so that we can conduct the all india level kind of examinations at the school level so this uh, entity is going to design a national entrance test if you want to have uh, the benefits of this scheme then you have to give this particular test you have to become eligible for this and once you have done this after that we government is going to consider whether to provide you the benefit or not so approximately 3000 students are eligible for the benefit of this particular scheme what kind of benefits that we are going to provide this is again an important thing that we should be talking about so selected students they will be admitted in the best private residential schools now government is not going to admit in their schools number one point fine what government is doing is that best private schools of the CBSC government is going to admit them now what the eligibility of the schools is also provided fine so in order to be eligible under this particular scheme your school should be eligible we are going to see that what are the eligible requirements the students they may be connected to the post metric scholarship schemes as well entire cost of school fee as well as the hostel fee that will be borne by the government of India so this is an important thing next is this thing which I was talking about where what kind of schools are selected see over here so these are the eligibility requirement first of all your school should be affiliated with the CBSC fine and after that at least five years should have happened since your existence Board results should be more than 75% in class 10th and 12th for the last 3 years and schools should have adequate infrastructure for admitting the students. It should not have happened that you just have admitted the students and there are no facilities in the hostels as well as your classrooms. So having the adequate infrastructure is also very important piece of thing. Now there are other features as well. So counseling etc will be provided and this is not very important thing that you should be having an idea about. Now next thing is provision for payment of uh, full 
year fee that will be provided by the central government selected schools will register themselves on the anudan portal please remember the name of the portal becomes important right anudan portal and they are going to submit their fees claim required documents shall be taken on e anudan portal through the integration of nta portal with the e anudan portal so now this becomes important thing you have to remember the name of e anudan portal because this has came into the association with the shreshtha scheme so this kind of information they becomes important now the next thing is bridge course see what happens is that uh, if government says that we are going to give you the admission in cbsc school but what if i have read from a government school i have till class 8 i have been from a government school so what will happen i will have to cope up with the new changes till now i have read all of the things in hindi but now onwards from the 9th class onwards i am going to study all of the things in english so this will become quite difficult for me so by keeping that in mind the government has said that okay fine we are going to provide you a bridge course as well so that it becomes easy for you to shift from hindi medium to english medium whatever kind of education you might be having early on we are going to equip it so there will be a 3 months course a bridge course for the students who are joining the cbsc school from state schools rural areas or the regional schools and this is the scholarship that will be provided so this is the scholarship scheme is considered to be the in the dbt mode direct benefit transfer right 9th class 1 lakh rupees per student 10th class 1 lakh 10000 125 and 135 so these are your scholarships under these your uh, tuition fees as well as the hostel fees both kinds of fees is covered shreshtha scheme is for the sc students right their family income should not exceed 2 lakh 50000 that is the criteria they have to give a national entrance test like the schools who all are eligible we have already seen that school must be in existence for 5 years they should have a board result above than 75% right all kinds of claim they have to register on the e anudan portal so this is how in a scheme you find out the important pieces of information and then you remember that particular scheme so with that this is it for this particular class thank you so much for joining in and please do not forget to like this video thank you